Audience, what looks better, Massacre's Corvette or the Jay-Z X100? There's no, it's red. That's the worst color. <laughs> it's a stock Corvette. Why don't you do that? It's a stock Corvette. Nobody wants to drive a stock Corvette. Nobody. guys we're out here at uh what is this called speed sports i've been here once before it's a really fun track i really enjoy it um we're kind of having a relaxed day today uh i haven't really been trying to like show up at the tracks really early every day just because i'm trying to enjoy this trip and i don't want to really like you know we were hanging out late last night and i'm not trying to like be sleep deprived this entire trip anyways i wanted to have a little monologue for the opening of this video this morning. Um, so after Aaron posted the video, um, the negative video, all the videos he posted about me are negative. I watch what he posts about other people and how his interviews go with other people and for some reason he really likes to target the negative things, um, you know, on the trip. With me specifically. Um, there's plenty of positive. People can focus on positive if they choose to. You can also focus on all the negative. One thing I do on my channel is I try and be real. Um, the other thing I do is I do show a lot of the, the trials and difficulties you go through because I feel like everyone deals with that stuff. That stuff is more exciting to watch. Um, I could literally just post driving footage of the entire trip, but that's not that's not that entertaining, right? It's the triumph, the, uh, the struggle, and then the overcoming of those struggles that is interesting to watch and actually builds a story. If everything's just all sunshine and roses, like there's not really a story there. There's no like, you know, look at any Disney movie or any any sort of movie that you want to watch. There's always like, you know, there's a plot. There's there's something there. You know, there, there has to be some negative. There has to be overcoming. There has to be, you know, all those all those parts of a story to make it interesting. And so, I look for those things throughout the day to post in my videos to make it so that there's actually something interesting to watch. So you can latch onto that and say, hey, Wicknick is just nothing but problems, nothing but trouble, nothing good ever happens. Like, that's fine if that's the way you want to look at it, but it's not necessarily the reality. Um, anyways, that's what's on my mind. Um, we actually talked about walking around the pits and showing all the problems that other people have, that people aren't showing their problems. Um, people just want to show what they want to show, right? But we're here watching literally with cars broken, blown up engines, people with all these problems, and I feel like nobody knows about that stuff. Aaron doesn't point it out, right? Those people don't point it out on themselves because they feel like it's embarrassing, but it's just a reality. I know you guys probably go through the same stuff, you know, and it's, it's unrealistic if you watch someone's channel that literally just shows all the good stuff, and you're like, man, only bad stuff happens to me. Like, nobody else really has problems. These guys build reliable drift cars, and like, they never have problems. That's unrealistic, it's not true. It's just people show what they want to show, and they don't necessarily show the reality. So I know some of you guys appreciate that. I've had a lot of comments in the past, people, people talking about how, you know, uh, on this channel we show the real, and, 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 and that's, I don't wanna change that. I don't wanna change that. And I'm trying not to let it get to me, but it gets really frustrating when uh, there's just a lot of negativity. Um, in reality, I love this car, not because, and I'm like, oh, it's my baby, I love my car. No, it's like, this is a really good car, it really is. And a lot of the problems I have are my own problems, right? I understand that the cheap IS300 axles break. Yes, because they're cheap IS300 axles. What's the solution? Spend money, right? There's always a, there's always a solution of spending money. And another thing I like to show is how you can get stuff done without spending a lot of money. And I do a lot of trial and error, right? Yeah, it was, it was a mistake to buy cheap axles. They break, they break, they break, they broke, they broke, they broke. We fixed them, we bought some OEM axles, now we don't have that problem anymore, right? Lesson learned, I learned it, showed it to you guys. You guys can say what you want, take that information what you want, leave negative comments if you want, that's fine. But I learned something, I hope someone else learned something at the same time, right? I'm the one suffering um, to learn that lesson, and that's fine. I could have easily just put Tour V axles and Tour V diff. I have all that stuff in my shop. 
Um, I just wanted to find a solution that makes it easier in the future for other people. Like, hey, if you have a JZX, you can run an IS300 diff and IS300 axles, but they probably have a power limit. What's the power limit? Let's find out. Um, and then, I mean, I could go on and on about all this stuff, right? But uh, the fact of the matter is, I'm actually having a good time. I enjoy this trip. I'm really like enjoying, uh, you know, hanging out with my friends and overcoming these struggles with my friends. Um, and I really do enjoy the, uh, the, the journey and the things that happen along the way. That's really what makes the trip worth it, right? If you just like leave home, everything's cool, you have a little bit of fun and you go home, like, cool, that was fun, right? Yeah, like, it's boring. It really is boring. But if you leave home, I think of it like, imagine traveling from uh, like New York to, to, to California in the 1800s with a wagon. You know, you got a wagon party, you got a couple horses, and you're just like, you're going across country, and like, there's no AAA. You don't just like get out your wallet and like have someone save you. If you can't make your wagon and your horses and your ox or whatever make it across the Oregon Trail without getting bit or getting dysentery or, you know what I mean? Like, what you, you can only rely on on yourself and your abilities and what you have, and that's what I enjoy about these kind of journeys. Like, yeah, anybody that's rich can just pay someone else to come fix their stuff for them. That's easy, right? But having the knowledge, the ability, the tools, the uh, not just that, but like the stamina, like the the emotional fortitude to handle all those problems and keep going, that is what I enjoy, um, and that's what I'm gonna keep showing. So like it or not, we're gonna get the car ready and go drive on track. Thanks for watching. just got off track and uh, the steering kept like the steering wheel started like over here and then it started getting over here and then it was like here I mean when it's supposed to be centered I'm saying so after a lap so I think something's getting bent in the front end maybe I'm not crazy maybe something really was wrong last night I just wasn't a knuckle I thought it was a knuckle and it wasn't but we came in to lift it up I probably got what like maybe 10 laps just now yeah that was going pretty hard yeah. I, so much so that the I ran out of storage on the uh, this thing so I came in to kind of cool off the tires, cool off the car overall, check the front end, put a new battery in that. Kelly got some sick footage, sick footage. James Dean was throwing it backwards. <laughs> Like not 
like not even like oh cool this is a backy he's like literally Reverse like like driving backwards down the track and then like making the corner somehow luke was doing that yesterday i didn't see it or two days ago yeah, yeah. i saw him post a video though i'm like that's wild mm -hmm. it's just but this track is so narrow he's literally threading the needle because uh james dean already got black flagged once for going off track so he's really risking it because if you drop one tire you're you're off track for 10 minutes and so i was trying to be really careful not to do that i went four tires off when i was leading because i kind of lost my steering Which is actually kind of why I think the, I think it's towed in in the front because I'm actually having a lot of trouble like at lock controlling the car. I think something's up with the front alignment. And usually I'm just like, oh, I'll just drive through it. But after like 10 mistakes that I've had, it's like I should probably check it out. Anyways, we're gonna look at that. And uh, man, for me, this is just a, I'm chilling. It's a chill day. Yeah. Are you yeah. chilling? Oh, dude, everybody's chilling. Where is? Man, how long have, how long have we been on Drift Week? It feels like we've been here a month. Right. We still got a week left. This is episode 11. Yeah. 11? 11 days. Oh! And we still have to drive home. Oh, and we're in Texas. We're as far away as, as we possibly could be. Texas. Uh, eh. All right, so on closer inspection, it looks like we are towed out. Just over 79 and 78 and a quarter. So we're like three quarter inch towed out. So I'm gonna say we probably got a bent tie rod. Luckily, I've got some spares from Easy Knuckles, so I'm gonna check that out right now and see what's going on. So, Gabe got put in timeout. Yeah, I'm it's a 10 minute T break. 10 minute T break. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Was it just one tire off? I think so, yeah. yeah. They, got, they got eyes like hawks, dude. Dude, bad. Like, I was yeah. just like barely off the rumble shit, yeah. too. Yeah. You can't be kicking up dirt, man. No. It creates a big rooster and, tail. And, and that was a problem. Long. That was a problem. I was on throttle. Ah. I was trying to dig out of a corner. I went four tires off oh. leading, so I just kind of like trickled through the grass, and I immediately, I'm like, I'm, you know, I just I, drove I'll off. I'll take my time off. He's like, come here. He's like, you're not in trouble. I'm like, what do you mean? I was four tires off. Like, but you weren't on throttle. I was like, oh, Ooh. all right, all right. Okay, right. that's what I need to remember. The next lap out. Oh, yeah. And then, yeah. And then, then you're on a timeout too? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's alright, I need to cool off anyways, guys. Uh, straight still... up, it worked out. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. my tires are going to be thank good you, now. Thank you, thank yeah. you. I'll be back in 10. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> seriously. Dude, everybody's got it. I, yeah. think, I think Luke's almost banned from the track. Oh, dude. So I saw coming. him doing backies and stuff going all up. Just all up. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. Dean was off for 10. And Already. now he's back there throwing it, throwing the car back. He's like literally driving backwards down the track oh, for half the, half the straight and then clearing I it. followed Julian and he was second gear already being a third out of the cones. And I'm like, oh, if I followed him through, of course. Did he make it? Almost. Oh. We made it. We, <laughs> we made it. But still, I was like, I don't, I don't think we're supposed to go this fast on straight. This is not, this is not <laughs> it's, a, it's only one day here though. So. Right, right, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I didn't say that. Cut that out. Oh, cut that. Cut that <laughs> cut part. That cut that part. I gotta fix a bent tie rod. I gotta figure out what's going on. Of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bend it back. Hey, look, guys. I got a bent tie rod. Can you imagine if I had a Corvette? I would never bend a tie rod because Corvettes don't break. They're just the best car in the world. If I had a Corvette, all my problems in my life would be solved. Said no one. So I was just thinking about this. This is the only the second time this entire trip that this front wheel's been on. That's how reliable this front right wheel has been for me. So, there's something to be said about that. The other wheel only came off because of that broken knuckle. Um, this side only came off. Nope, this is the first time it's come off on this trip. So that's pretty good. And I'm only taking it off to do an inspection because I'm not sure if uh, the tie rod's bent on this side or the other side. So I'm gonna take it off, do a nut and bolt on the whole front end, check everything, and then put it back on. Only for maintenance, maintenance only. So it looks like we have a bad tie rod. Oh yeah, the inner. I think it's the inner, I don't know if it's coming loose or if it's uh, completely bad. It's important to know what spare parts to bring when you go drifting. Um, and really that kind of depends on your car and uh, some experience on what brakes or talk to other people that have a similar chassis. Um, on a trip like this, I decided to bring as much spare stuff as possible and luckily I ordered these inner tie rods right before we left. Um, I didn't know for sure we were gonna need them but it turns out we did. Uh, these ones are pretty cool because they are cut to length. So they're as long as you would ever need, and then you cut them down to your specific chassis, um, what you might need. So uh, when Easy Knuckle sells these, it's for the GS, IS, LS, everything. Uses the same tie rod, and then you just cut the length. It's got tons of thread on it. 
So we're gonna get this swapped out because the inner joint went bad on that one from uh, a lot of abuse. So we changed out the tie rod and after we got it up, it still had a little bit of wiggle. So I think the, the tie rod was a little bit bad, but it wasn't the main problem. The rack actually has some play in it and we don't have a solution for that. If you've been watching my videos, you know we brought a spare rack, but it leaks. So um, we're not gonna replace this loose rack with a leaky rack, but we do have something in case this completely blows out to get us home. So I'll probably have to send both these racks out to be rebuilt and to get a fresh rack in there. This has a offset rack spacer, which I really have not not a big fan of. I never ran them on my 240s. I always did a rack relocation, so I'm probably gonna buy the WiseFab rack relocation for this, or build one, and then uh, run this kit with a with a rack that's pushed forward. Doesn't pay to be lazy. These hands can work. These boots were made for walking, and these hands were made for work. And this song never ends in my head. Doesn't help me with my doing my jig. Oh, oh well. Uh... Here's another drift week hack. Um, if you're poor and you can't pay someone else to mount your tires, you uh, come do it yourself. There's nobody waiting over here because they're all lazy. And my tires are already mounted and everybody else is sitting in line. since but uh, that doesn't leak I was really worried about that leaking ended up working out really well even though it's not like very well sealed in that hose I guess there's not much pressure in there it just kind of dribbles down through there so that's cool it's all fixed up time to go get some more laps I think we're getting close to the end of the day so I want to get some more laps before the day's over <laughs> Sitting the throttle, warming up the belt. I'm warming up the car, all of it. Belt, oh. trans, the seat, everything. Steering wheel, <laughs> all of it. I'm on top of the world. So this is a really cool car. Not to knock it by any means, but it is a brand new, off the showroom floor, 5,000 miles on the engine, and uh, the engine's blown up. Nobody wants to talk about that, but it happened. Reliable, money, like brand new, all that stuff. Yeah, maybe, but not always. No, Kyle, no! Brandon Wicking's the only one that breaks down. Nothing against Kyle, nothing against What? Out of gas. Oh. I just gotta prove to Aaron that I'm not the only one that breaks. Whoa, but it doesn't whoa, count. Whoa, it doesn't, I'm out of gas. You're just, you just have to, you happen to be the closest to my camera. Out it. of gas, okay, fair enough, fair enough, fair <laughs> enough. Do you have a gas gauge that works? Oh, of course not. <laughs> just drift weak things. Yeah.
the third gear entry and I've been having trouble with getting second gear. And sure enough, we go through a corner, he's on me. I can't get second, I'm like, jam, 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 nothing. I was like, he's gonna hit, he's gonna hit. I honestly didn't feel it hit me. It was a graceful hit. But, uh, I wanted you like to play. I know, I'm sorry, I couldn't get second. I, like, I figured, I was like, that was a mischief. Do you have a tool in your car, pliers or anything? You know what I do have? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the first impact of this trip, but it's not that bad. I got hit by fielding. I've been doing so good at keeping the car clean, and then uh, I misshifted and got run into at fielding. Major bummer, but hey, at least the bumper fits still on the car. It's just a little bit of damage. It can be fixed. It can always be fixed, right? We're about to ride back to the house and uh, try and go get dinner with uh, with Will. Chill with Will for one more day until we gotta head to our next stop, our next Airbnb. Oh man, it's like a party here at the gas station. We stopped by to fill up with E85. And there's a bunch of Driftweek boys filling up the whole parking lot right close to the track. Um, tomorrow's a day off, and then uh, we're back to MSR? No, there's another track. I don't know what the next track is. I'll have to look. But uh, got some good footage today, I think. Had some good sessions, but once again, like I didn't spend the whole day driving. Went through about a pair, yeah, went through a full pair of tires today. Um, it was awesome. Good time. Good track. Fun times. Uh, they were doing a lot of black flags today. The track was getting torn up, so they were being really strict about not dropping. And most of my drops were like in tandem when I either had to avoid hitting someone or avoid getting hit. Um, you know, every, I think everybody got in trouble today. Everybody. It was awful. It was cool in theory. And then I, I, I slept on it for two days. <laughs> And this is day three. He showed up and Kelly's like, I'll take the bean back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, dude, that sounds cool. Yeah, because nobody else has to sleep on it. Oh, you were, you were falling on the sword. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then Will was like, no, no, you don't have to. And I was like, nah, Will, you already did too much. I'll sleep on the bean bag for, for free. Like, oh, I hate it. Look at my legs. Hmm? My legs. Oh man, all the blood goes to my feet. <laughs> then I wake up and they're all tingly. There's no blood in your head. There's never blood in my head. <laughs> oh man. Uh, 